This day, a solemn feast the people hold to Dagon, their sea idol, and forbid laborious works. Unwillingly this rest their superstition yields me. Hence, with leave retiring from the popular noise, I seek this unfrequented place to find some ease. Ease to the body, some, none to the mind, from restless thoughts that, like a deadly swarm of hornets armed, no sooner found alone but rush upon me thronging and present times past. What once I was, and what am now. Oh, wherefore was my birth from heaven foretold? Why was my breeding ordered and prescribed as of a person separate to God, designed for great exploits? If I must die betrayed, captived, and both my eyes put out, made of my enemies the scorn and gaze to grind in brazen fetters under task with this heaven-gifted strength, Oh, glorious strength put to the labour of a beast debased lower than bond slave. Promise was that I should Israel from Philistian yoke deliver. Ask for this great deliverer now and find him eyeless in Gaza at the mill with slaves, himself in bonds under Philistian yoke. And men of Dan, for such ye seem, though in this uncouth place. Say, if my son be here. As signal now in low, dejected state, as erst in highest, behold him where he lies. Oh, miserable change. Is this the man? That invincible Samson, far renowned, the dread of Israel's foes, who with a strength equivalent to angels walked their streets, none offering fight? Who, single combatant, dueled their armies, ranked in proud array, himself an army? Oh, never failing trust in mortal strength. Ah, what thing good prayed for, but often proves our woe, our bane. I prayed for children, and thought barrenness in wedlock a reproach. I gained a son, and such a son as all men hailed me happy. Who would be now a father in my stead? Oh, wherefore did God grant me my request, and as a blessing with such pomp adorned? For this did the angel twice descend, select and sacred, Glorious for a while, the miracle of men. Then, in an hour, ensnared, assaulted, overcome, led bound, thy foe's derision, captive, poor and blind, into a dungeon thrust to work with slaves. feet and wavering resolution I came, still dreading thy displeasure, Samson, which to have merited without excuse I cannot but acknowledge. But conjugal affection prevailing over fear and timorous doubt hath led me on, desirous to behold once more thy face and know of thy estate. If aught in my ability may serve to lighten what thou sufferest, and though late, yet in some part to recompense my rash 
but more unfortunate misdeed. Tout out, hyena! These are thy wonted arts, and arts of every woman false, like thee, to break all faith, all vows, deceive, betray. Then, as repentant, to submit, besiege, and reconcilement move with feigned remorse. Confess, and promise wonders in her change, not truly penitent, but chief to try her husband how far urged his patience bears, his virtue or weakness which way to assail. Then, with more cautious and instructed skill, again transgresses and again submits. Yet hear me, Samson, not that I endeavour to lessen or extenuate my offence, but that with just allowance counterpoised I may, if possible, thy pardon find thee easier towards me, or thy hatred less. First granting, as I do, it was a weakness in me, but incident to all our sex, was it not weakness also to make known for importunity, that is for naught, wherein consisted all thy strength and safety? To what I did, thou showedst me first the way. But I to enemies revealed and should not. Nor shouldst thou have trusted that to woman's frailty, ere I to thee. Thou to thyself wast cruel. Let weakness then with weakness come to parley, so near related or the same of kind. Thine forgive mine, that men may censure thine the gentler, if severely thou exact not more strength from me than in thyself was found. And what if love which thou interpret'st hate, the jealousy of love, powerful of sway in human hearts, nor less in mine towards thee, caused what I did. I saw thee mutable of fancy, feared lest one day thou wouldst leave me as her at Timna, sought by all means, therefore, how to endear and hold thee to me firmest. No better way I saw than by importuning to learn thy secrets, get into my power thy key of strength and safety. Thou wilt say, why then revealed? I was assured by those who tempted me that nothing was designed against thee but safe custody and hold. That made for me. I knew that liberty would draw thee forth to perilous enterprises, while I at home sat full of cares and fears, wailing thy absence in my widowed bed. Here. I should still enjoy thee day and night. Mine and love's prisoner, not the Philistines, hold to myself, unhazarded abroad, fearless at home of partners in my love. These reasons in love's law have passed for good, though fond and reasonless to some, perhaps, and love hath oft, well-meaning, wrought much woe, yet always pity or pardon hath obtained. In argument with men, a woman ever goes by the worse, whatever be her cause. For want of words, no doubt, or lack of breath, witness when I was worried with thy peals. I was a fool, too rash, and quite mistaken in what I thought would have succeeded best. Let me obtain forgiveness of thee, Samson. Afford me place to show what recompense towards thee I intend for what I have misdone, misguided. Only what remains past cure, bear not too sensibly, nor still insist to afflict thyself in vain. Though sight be lost, life yet hath many solaces. 
enjoyed where other senses want not their delights at home in leisure and domestic ease, exempt from many a care and chance to which eyesight exposes daily men abroad. I to the lords will intercede, not doubting their favourable ear, that I may fetch thee from forth this loathsome prison house to abide with me, where my redoubled love and care with nursing diligence to me glad office may ever tend about thee to old age with all things grateful, cheered, and so supplied that what by me thou hast lost, thou least will miss. No, no, of my condition take no care, it fits not. Thou and I long since are twain. Nor think me so unwary or accursed to bring my feet again into the snare where once I have been caught. I know thy trains, though dearly, to my cost. Thy gins and toils, thy fair enchanted cup and warbling charms no more on me have power. Their force is nulled. So much of adder's wisdom I have learned to fence my ear against thy sorceries. If in my flower of youth and strength, when all men laughed, honoured, feared me, thou alone could hate me, thy husband, slight me, sell me, and forego me, how wouldst thou use me now, blind and thereby deceivable, in most things as a child helpless, thence easily condemned and scorned and last neglected? How wouldst thou insult when I must live uxorious to thy will in perfect thraldom? How again betray me, bearing my words and doings to the lords to gloss upon and censuring, frown or smile? This jail I count the house of liberty to thine, whose doors my feet shall never enter. Let me approach at least and touch thy hand. Not for thy life, lest fierce remembrance wake my sudden rage to tear thee joint by joint. A distance. I forgive thee. Go with that. Bewail thy falsehood at the pious works it hath brought forth to make thee memorable among illustrious women, faithful wives. Cherish thy hastened widowhood with the gold of matrimonial treason. So, farewell. I see thou art implacable, more deaf to prayers than winds and seas. Yet winds to seas are reconciled at length, and sea to shore. Thy anger unappeasable still rages, eternal tempest never to be calmed. Why do I humble thus myself, and suing for peace, reap nothing but repulse and hate, bid go with evil omen, and the brand of infamy upon my name denounced? But in my country, where I most desire, in Ekron, Gaza, Asdod, and in Gath, I shall be named among the famousest of women, sung at solemn festivals, living and dead recorded, who, to save her country from a fierce destroyer, chose above the faith of wedlock bands. My tomb with odours visited and annual flowers, not less renowned than in Mount Ephraim, jail who with inhospitable guile smote Sisera sleeping through the temples nailed. Nor shall I count it heinous to enjoy the public marks of honour and reward conferred upon me for the piety which to my country I was judged to have shown. At this, whoever envies or repines, I leave him to his lot, and like my own. Come not, Samson, to condole thy chance, 
as these, perhaps, yet wish it had not been, though for no friendly intent. I am of Gath, men call me Haratha, of stock renowned as Og or Enak, and the Emims old that Kiriasaim held. Thou knowest me now, if thou at all art known. Much I have heard of thy prodigious might and feats performed incredible to me, in this displeased that I was never present on the place of those encounters where we might have tried each other's force in camp or listed field, and now am come to see of whom such noise hath walked about, and each limb to survey if thy appearance answer loud report. The way to know were not to see, but taste. Dost thou already single me? I thought jives and the mill had tamed thee. Oh, that fortune had brought me to the field where thou art famed to have wrought such wonders with an ass's jaw. I should have forced thee soon with other arms, or left thy carcass where the ass lay thrown. So had the glory of prowess been recovered to Palestine, won by a Philistine from the unforeskinned race, of whom thou bearst the highest name of valiant acts. That honour, certain to have won by mortal duel from thee, I lose, prevented by thy eyes put out. Boast not of what thou wouldst have done, but do what then thou wouldst, thou seest it in thy hand. To combat with a blind man I disdain, and thou hadst need much washing to be touched. <laughs> Such usage as your honourable lords afford me, assassinated and betrayed, who durst not with their whole united powers in fight withstand me, single and unarmed, nor in the house with chamber ambushes, close banded, durst attack me, no, not sleeping, till they had hired a woman with their gold, breaking her marriage faith to circumvent me. Therefore, without feigned shifts, let be assigned some narrow place enclosed, where sight may give thee, or rather flight, no great advantage on me. Then put on all thy gorgeous arms, thy helmet and brigandine of brass, thy broad aburgeon, vambrace and greaves and gauntlet. Add thy spear, a weaver's beam, and seven times folded shield. I only with an oaken staff will meet thee and raise such outcries on thy clattered iron, which long shall not withhold me from thy head, that in a little time, while breath remains thee, thou oft shalt wish thyself at Gath to boast again in safety what thou wouldst have done to Samson, but shall never see Gath more. Thou dost not thus disparage glorious arms, which greatest heroes have in battle worn, their ornament and safety had not spell and black enchantments, some magician's art, arm thee or charm thee strong, which thou from heaven, thanks that thy birth was given thee in thy hair, where strength could least abide, though all thy hairs were bristles, ranged like those that ridge the back of chaffed wild boars or ruffled porcupines. I know no spells, use no forbidden arts. My trust is in the living God who gave me at my nativity this strength, diffused no less through all my sinews, joints, and bones than thine, while I preserved these locks unshorn, the pledge of my unviolated vow. For proof hereof, if Dagon be thy God, Go to his temple, invocate his aid with solemnest devotion, spread before him how highly it concerns his glory now to frustrate and dissolve these magic spells, which I to be the power of Israel's God of our. And challenge Dagon to the test, offering to combat thee his champion bold with the utmost of his Godhead seconded. Then thou shalt see, or rather to thy sorrow, soon feel whose God is strongest, thine or mine. I once again defy thee to the trial of mortal fight by combat to decide whose God is God, thine or whom I with Israel's sons adore. Fair honour that thou dost thy God, 
in trusting he will accept thee to defend his cause? A murderer, a revolter, and a robber? Tut, doughty giant, how dost thou prove me these? Is not thy nation subject to our lords? My nation was subjected to your lords. It was the force of conquest. Force with force is well ejected when the conquered can. These shifts refuted answer thy appellant, though by his blindness maimed for high attempts, who now defies thee thrice to single fight as a petty enterprise of small enforce. With thee, a man condemned, a slave enrolled, due by the law to capital punishment, to fight with thee no man of arms will deign. Camest thou for this, vain boaster, to survey me? To descant on my strength and give thy verdict. Come nearer. Part not hence so slight informed, but take good heed my hand, survey not thee. Oh, bear Ziba! Can my ears unused hear these dishonours and not render death? No man withholds thee. Nothing from thy hand fear I incurable. Bring up thy van. My heels are fettered, but my fist is free. This insolence other kind of answer fits. Go. Baffled coward, lest I run upon thee, though in these chains, bulk without spirit vast, and with one buffet lay thy structure low, or swing thee in the air, then dash thee down to the hazard of thy brains and shattered sides. By Ashtaroth, ere long thou shalt lament these braveries in irons laden on thee. Be of good courage. I begin to feel some rousing motions in me which dispose to something extraordinary, my thoughts. I with this messenger will go along. Nothing to do, be sure, that may dishonor our law or stain my vow of Nazarite. If there be aught of presage in the mind, this day will be remarkable in my life by some great act. Or of my days the last. In time thou hast resolved, the man returns. Samson, this second message from our lords to thee I am bid say. Art thou our slave, our captive, at the public mill our drudge, and darest thou at our sending and command dispute thy coming? Come without delay, or we shall find such engines to assail and hamper thee as thou shalt come of force though thou art firmly fastened than a rock. I could be well content to try their art, which to no few of them would prove pernicious, yet knowing their advantage is too many, because they shall not trail me through their streets like a wild beast, I am content to go. I praise thy resolution. Doff these links. By this compliance thou wilt win the lords to favour, and perhaps to set thee free. Brethren, farewell. Your company along I will not wish, lest it perhaps offend them to see me girt with friends. And how the sight of me as of a common enemy so dreaded once may now exasperate them, I know not. Happen what may, of me expect to hear nothing dishonourable, impure, unworthy our God, our law, my nation, or myself, the last of me, or no, I cannot warrant. Death to life is crown or shame. All by him fell, thou sayest. By whom fell he? What glorious hand gave Samson his death's wound? Unwounded of his enemies he fell. 
wearied with slaughter then, or how? Explain. By his own hands. Self-violence. What cause brought him so soon at variance with himself among his foes? Inevitable cause at once both to destroy and be destroyed. The edifice where all were met to see him upon their heads and on his own he pulled. Occasions drew me early to this city, and as the gates I entered with sunrise, the morning trumpets festival proclaimed through each high street. Little I had dispatched when all abroad was rumoured that this day Samson should be brought forth to show the people proof of his mighty strength in feats and games. I sorrowed at his captive state, but minded not to be absent from that spectacle. The building was a spacious theatre, half round on two main pillars, vaulted high, with seats where all the lords and each degree of sort might sit in order to behold. The other side was open, where the throng on banks and scaffolds under sky might stand. I among these aloof obscurely stood. The feast and noon grew high and sacrifice had filled their hearts with mirth, high cheer and wine, when to their sports they turned. Immediately was Samson as a public servant brought, in their state livery clad. Before him pipes and timbrels, on each side went armed guards, both horse and foot before him, and behind archers and slingers, cataphracts and spears. At sight of him, the people with a shout rifted the air, clamoring their god with praise, who had made their dreadful enemy their thrall. He, patient but undaunted, where they led him, came to the place, and what was set before him, which without help of eye might be assayed, to heave, pull, draw, or break, he still performed all with incredible, stupendous force, none daring to appear antagonist. At length, for intermission's sake, they led him between the pillars. He, his guide, requested for so from such as near as stood we heard, as overtired, to let him lean a while with both his arms on those two massive pillars that to the arched roof gave main support. He, unsuspicious, led him, which, when Samson felt in his arms, with head a while inclined and eyes fast fixed, he stood as one who prayed, or some great matter in his mind revolved. At last, with head erect, thus cried aloud, Hitherto, lords, what your commands imposed I have performed, as reason was, obeying, not without wonder or delight beheld. Now, of my own accord, such other trial I mean to show you of my strength, yet greater, as with amaze, shall strike all who behold. This uttered, straining all his nerves, he bowed, as with the force of winds and waters pent when mountains tremble, those two massive pillars with horrible convulsion to and fro, he tugged, he shook, till down they came and drew the whole roof after them with burst of thunder upon the heads of all who sat beneath. Lords, ladies, captains, counsellors and priests, 
their choice nobility and flower. Not only of this, but each Philistian city round met from all parts to solemnize this feast. Samson, with these in mixed, inevitably pulled down the same destruction on himself. The vulgar only escaped who stood without. Oh, dearly bought revenge, yet glorious, living or dying, thou hast fulfilled the work for which thou wast foretold to Israel. And now liest victorious among thy slain, self-killed, not willingly, but tangled in the fold of dire necessity, whose law in death can join thee with thy slaughtered foes in number more than all thy life had slain before. Come, come, no time for lamentation now, nor much more cause. Samson hath quit himself like Samson, and heroically hath finished a life heroic, on his enemies fully revenged, hath left them years of mourning and lamentation to the sons of Castor through all Philistian bounds. To Israel, honour hath left, and freedom, let but then find courage to lay hold on this occasion. To himself and father's house, eternal fame, and which is best and happiest yet, all this with God not parted from him as was feared, but favouring and assisting to the end. Nothing is here for tears, nothing to wail or knock the breast, no weakness, no contempt, dispraise or blame, nothing but well and fair and what may quiet us in a death so noble. Let us go find the body where it lies soaked in his enemy's blood and from the stream with lavers pure and cleansing herbs wash off the clotted gore. I, with what speed the while, will send for all my kindred, all my friends, to fetch him hence and solemnly attend with silent obsequy and funeral train home to his father's house. There will I build him a monument and plant it round with shade of laurel evergreen and branching palm, with all his trophies hung and acts enrolled in copious legend or sweet lyric song. Thither shall all the valiant youth resort and from his memory inflame their breasts to matchless valour and adventures high. All is best. Though we oft doubt what the unsearchable dispose of highest wisdom brings about. God now, with new acquist of true experience from this great event, his servants hath dismissed. Dismissed with peace and consolation and calm of mind, all passion spent.